enemies of the human race. Even the underground networks rarely come across any information on them. With that said, it was a bit of a hassle, but I managed to dig up a few clues. Really? That quickly? You really are well connected, Master G. Luke. Come to think of it, Mr. Big Animal God Barbados, why exactly do you need the help of mere humans? Uh, how do I put it? The Seven, as people now know them, were once known as the Seven Archons. Each Archon presides over their own part of Tavat. That is the role the Archons play. Only in performing this duty can we attain power. But I don't like the idea of ruling Mondstadt, and I don't feel Mondstadt would really like it either. Go forth and establish a city of freedom without rule. We have not forgotten Barbados's wish for Mondstadt. Jean, you're such a devotee. Maybe someone got a little too free and is just too lazy to care. Uh, however it may have come to be, I haven't been back to Mondstadt for an extended period of time. Without a doubt, I am now the weakest Archon among the Seven. Aw, <laughs> you flatter me. Oh, such a humble god. Is it a blessing or a curse? <clears throat> but we digress. Let's get back to the topic at hand. The common enemy of all mankind. We have tracked the Abyss Mage to the vicinity of the winery. I cannot stress enough how important it is to not let it escape. Huh? What's this? After the Abyss Mage was defeated, a certain energy dispersed from its body. It seems that energy was being used to cut off the connection between me and Duvali. Huh. Do you know of Storm Terror's le- Of course. I believe the people of Mondstadt all know of it. After Duvalin woke up, he took the ancient ruins as his lair. As it was with the storms that previously cut Mondstadt off from the outside world, the entrance to the ruins is also sealed by a special barrier. But now, as the energy dispersed from the Abyss Mage, I was able to read the rhythmic flow of how the barrier's magic was woven. <laughs> I must admit, it sounds even more horrendous than a chorus of hilly churls, but... It should be enough to let us break through the storm barrier and reach Storm Terror's lair. Which means we're going to confront Devalin? I'm fine with that. Jean is the one who wishes to avoid any direct confrontation. No. When there are no other options left, it is my responsibility to alter our course of action. If slaying him is our only choice, I will gladly become the knight that leads the charge. Fortunately, we have yet to need to go that far. Hmm. By that, you mean... I mean that the Holy Liar is not our trump card. Our real trump card? The Traveler, of course. The Traveler? Correct. But you have a much more precious forte. The impurities in the tears and the curse that binds Devalin belong to the same Maleficent power. Which means... You tone-deaf bard, don't you see how crazy this is? You've seen what Devon is like when he's ticked off. She'll be swallowed whole before she even gets to lift a finger. Hey, nice plan. Worth a shot. I am with you, honorary knight. Oh, so we just need to fight monsters from the abyss and a dragon. No pressure or anything. Humans aren't without their strengths. Let's go. And so, epic actions of brave heroes finally leads to this 11th hour. It's a storm barrier. It looks so dangerous. Leave it to me. Although this wooden liar is all I have. I don't need the liar to break through this kind of storm barrier. Uh, uh, wait, what is that? Attack! Prepare yourselves! Uh, the hilly churls usually do not venture into areas with high elemental concentrations. It puts a heavy burden on their bodies. The Abyss Order must be manipulating them behind the scenes, yet they shouldn't have been able to determine that we would come. They're presumably spreading their forces to halt our plans. Without further ado... I suppose I can play faster if my only audience is the wind. It actually opened! You're not entirely useless, Tony!
Don't get far. This is it. We are now entering Storm Terror's lair. Watch yourselves. Let's move. Suppose we could make use of that wind current. Let's make a detour then. Heading up. Let's make a detour then. Heading up. Oh, we can't advance any further. The ruins seem to be guarded by ancient seals. Is this the work of Devalin? No. These ruins were once part of an ancient city. Devalin just happens to be nesting in these ruins for now. These ruins even predate the existence of the Four Winds. Mondstadt is a city without a ruler. However, before it was, it was ruled over by a tyrant. Anyway, I'll sing you that story when we have a chance in the future. The markings on this seal. If my archaeological knowledge is not mistaken, this appears to be a light act. If we retrieve and reintegrate all the parts, we should be able to get it working. We should be close to completing the ceremony for this actuator. Let's put the last part back and see. Looks like we're right. There are three more halos circling the tower. Which means there are three more corresponding light actuators to activate. I can see one from here. The rest must be scattered within the ruins around here. Let's go find them. Alan picked a place filled with puzzles and seals as his lair. Doesn't he get annoyed coming back home? <laughs> he doesn't walk in. He flies in. <sighs> you do have a point. I'm thinking about turning these adventures into songs after we're done. Hopefully this song will be sung for years to come by the people of Mondstadt, just like the legend of Vanessa. I have loved that song since I was small. How are you feeling today, honorary knight? I am completely prepared and fully confident that we can do this. Even Master D. Luke accompanied us to the very end. Despite only being an accidentally involved bystander. You shared your secret with me, and I only returned your trust to the same extent. It's freedom. Freedom? When you first arrived at Mondstadt, did no one tell you that Mondstadt is the city of freedom? <laughs> she really is a child of freedom. Mondstadt is a romantic city without the reign of a king, and its citizens enjoy the most freedom amongst the seven nations. I hope the dragon that once protected Mondstadt will soon be free too. No one should have deceived him by telling him that Mondstadt betrayed him. And no one should have told him that it was his eternal duty to protect the city. He has the right and freedom to choose his own way of life. Venti? Well then, Traveler, may the thousands of years of wind that have blown through Mondstadt go with you. Just like the last time, I shall channel animal energy for you. Oh, no wonder you said his voice sounds familiar.
been a while since we flew like this together. How to Valen? Just now. Why? Why did you not ask me to protect you like the last time? Me not wanting you to listen to the Abyss Order doesn't mean that you have to listen to me. Freedom, if demanded of you by an Archon, is really no freedom at all. Is this the power of the animal Archon? But I am no longer part of the Four Winds. Even if that's so, you still protected us regardless. Now spread your wings of freedom and go with my blessing. And so, the Storm Terror threat was quelled. I clarified the misunderstanding to the citizens of Mondstadt and let them know that they are safe. To them, it seems Storm Terror attacked Mondstadt out of nowhere and then vanished just as quickly. They must be finding the whole ordeal very confusing. However, winds change their course. Someday, they will blow towards a brighter future. You guys are back! <laughs> the honorary knight returns triumphant! Yep, we're back from tussling with the Valen. You just returned yesterday, right? Jean got back first, and she told us all about your heroic deeds. Ah, <sighs> I wonder if I'll ever get an opportunity like that. You're right, actually. Peace is hard won, and we shouldn't take it for granted. And this time, you're the one we should all be grateful to. You're welcome! But have you been waiting for us here this whole time? Of course not. Just because I'm not out on the front line doesn't mean I don't have work to do. In fact, I'm dealing with the aftermath of the crisis as we speak. Aftermath? Here? What happened in Mondstadt? While Master Jean was away, the monsters lurking nearby made a coordinated attack on the city. Fortunately, we weren't completely taken by surprise. I detected the hilly churls were moving closer to the city a while back. Oh, yeah! Paima remembers. When we first met, you were clearing out one of their camps. Exactly. And if we hadn't started making preparations back then, Mondstadt would be in much greater danger by now. Me too. But I have a strange feeling that we're not out of the woods yet. Hilly churls aren't usually capable of coordinating like this. Our best guess is that the Abyss Order is behind it. They've taken over the Hilly churls. Good thing we saved Devalin, or they might have taken him, too. That's right. And since I'm the Outrider, it's up to me to keep eyes on the Abyss Order from now on. Ugh, I'm sorry. You should be celebrating your victory, not listening to all this somber talk. Hmm, I promised to take you out for some sticky honey roast, didn't I? Before everyone got caught up in the Storm Terror Crisis. There's no time like the present, right? You guys hungry? You bet! You may have forgotten till just now, but it's been on Paimon's mind this whole time. Awesome, let's go. It's been way too long since I last ate a sticky honey roast myself. Wait for me a good hunter. I'll be right there. I just have to clean up here real quick. Here we go. This is it. Crisis, danger, the thrill of adventure. Adventurer's Guild. Finally, our days of rescuing kittens and finding lost puppies are over! The age of adventure is upon us! Roll up, youngsters! Join the Adventurer's Guild today! In this time of great upheaval, we must rally together, take on the dragon, and save our great city of Mondstadt! What? What? The Storm Terror threat is resolved? I miss the acting clan master's speech. <sighs> ah, Storm Terror should have put up more of a fight. We didn't get to join in. 
Long live the heroes. <sighs> Thank you. It's finally over. Many trade routes have closed due to the storm terror incident. We can cope for now without fresh fruit and vegetables. <sighs> but if the wine supply dries up, we're all doomed. <sighs> I cannot imagine a world without wine. I hope they get the trade routes back up and running soon. So Storm Terror's true identity is Devalin, one of the Four Winds. We never should have forgotten his past sacrifice for Mondstadt. Every cloud has a silver lining. We're fortunate that our relationship with the Dragon of the East didn't sour past the point of no return. For that, we have you to thank. And Jean for her unfailing devotion. As long as we have the Knights of Favonius, peace and freedom will prevail in Mondstadt. Greetings! May I take your order? Why so cold? I've always thought that we enjoy quite the intimate friendship. <laughs> it seems your great battle sharpened not only your combat skills, but your wit as well. Ah, a knight after my own heart. To bask in the presence of Mondstadt's new big hero is quite the morale boost. And that's coming from a knight. Sweet-talking, sugar-coated Captain Kaya. <laughs> Nonsense. I speak from the heart. Just looking for a quiet spot to collect my thoughts. While all the other knights are working hard to clean up after the battle? Thinking can be an arduous task, you know. Believe me, I'd much rather be taking out the trash. So what you thinking about then? The Abyss Order. A dragon wreaks havoc in Mondstadt, and the acting Grand Master leaves the city to combat the threat. Strategically, that's the perfect moment for the Abyss Order to make their move. If you were the Abyss Order, would you squander this golden opportunity by sending in nothing more than a few hilly churls? To get to the bottom of it, I decided to wait. So I waited and watched for their next move. Then came the day you made all hell break loose in Storm Terror's lair. Just as the hilly churl's cries sounded from the city gates. That same day, I saw shadowy figures lurking in the city itself. Inside the city? Well, all the other knights were outside, fighting the enemy. As you can imagine, that left the inside of the city completely unguarded. Except for me, of course. And so I approached the Abyss Order infiltrators for a bit of... Mm, let's call it fraternizing. Through various means, I managed to gather some rather interesting intel. The situation is this. The Abyss Order. They are united under a single leader. The Abyss Order has a leader? Yes. And it was this very leader who devised the plot to turn Dvalin into a weapon of war. What exactly did you have to do to find this out? <laughs> Let's just say I'm blessed with certain linguistic powers. There's more. The Abyss Order has a name for this leader. They call her the Princess. Now, I'm sorry to cut this intelligence briefing short, but I do believe I spy Amber heading this way. I think she's still angry with me for my absence from the defense effort during the attack. I'd better slip away before she notices me. One minute I see Kaya, the next he slipped away. Clear sign of a guilty conscience. Are you sure? Because that sounds like exactly what he'd say to talk himself out of trouble. Uh, but let's forget about him. I worked super hard today and my tummy's rumbling. Let's order. Hi, Sarah. One sticky honey roast, please. So, now the storm terror threat is behind us. What are your plans for the next step? Paimon thinks it's time to leave Mondstadt and keep looking through the Seven Nations until we find clues about his sister. Huh, really? Oh, well, I guess this is goodbye for now. Hey, don't feel down. You'll always be a friend of the Knights of Avonius and our honorary knight. Wherever you may go and wherever the winds may blow, that's the spirit. Remember, Mondstadt will always welcome you. All right, 
Now let's eat before it gets cold. Mmm, that was good. Note to Paimon, Amber's recommendations are worth the wait. Of course. While I don't trust myself in the kitchen, you can always trust me with the menu. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Jean's waiting for you at the cathedral. It's something to do with the Holy Lair de Himmel. You'd better head there now. This is Barbara, the deaconess of the church. She is here to retrieve the Holy Lair de Himmel. May the Animo Archon protect you. I'm not really in a position to speak compared to our acting Grand Master. But I still want to thank you all on behalf of all of Mondstadt for your assistance. Fortunately, everything was resolved peacefully. I can't imagine how an all-out war between the military and the dragon would have ended. Now the Fatui have no choice but to keep their mouths shut. They must be annoyed that things didn't turn out as planned for them. This time, they even lost their best excuse to pressure the Knights of Favonius. Diplomatically speaking, they gained nothing. And on the contrary, simply proved just how vexatious they can be. Sounds like quite the story. So, did you bring the Holy Liar with you? We cannot ask you to keep defending the Liar forever. The Seneschal has been pressing me for a while now. We, uh, did bring it with us. Um, it's just... It's a little... Oh, don't worry. I'm not here to collect rent. The church has always received special funding. for the rest of my life. It would still not be enough. <sighs> oh, give it here. to fix it, but you'll never touch the liar again! We, uh, really should get going. That trick I used to repair the holy liar... <laughs> I mean, the magic I used isn't going to hold forever, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> you Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. Scurrying through the streets looking for leftovers? Mondstadt calls this a god? Resident rodent beats invasive vermin. Don't you dare speak back to me, insolent bard. Absentee Archon of Mondstadt. How impotent you've become. That smirky wear looks out of place. Did you steal it from your master's base? I should have held your tongue. So, this is a gnosis. Wouldn't be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Beauty is a waste when the beholder has no taste. Fenty! <laughs> well, we have what we came here for.
come before our dear Favonian friends arrive. Leave nothing for them to find. <coughs> Planet? Uh, don't listen to his nonsense, Miss Barbara. Ah, uh, um, okay. Well, basically, I found you lying outside the cathedral unconscious and used my elemental powers to heal you. Paimon thinks you could still use a final splash of ice-cold water to the face. That bard awakened first, but strangely, my healing powers had almost no effect on him. This is the first time I've encountered such a patient. But he just said, it's completely normal, and then got up and left the cathedral. He left? Already? Where did he go? The symbol of Mondstadt's hero. That's what he said. I wanted to stop him, but Jean, uh, I, I mean, Master Jean, said to let him leave. How strange. Paimon remembers Venti healing under that tree before. It's probably due to the connection between Windrise and the Animal Archon. Master Jean has figured it out as well, but we can't tell Barbara. The wind amongst the branches is good. I love the way it smells. <laughs> I said the exact same thing last time. <sighs> Why do I only say these things when I'm down on my luck? Ah, uh, so you noticed. Uh, this isn't something I'm meant to discuss with ordinary people. But I suppose I can let you in on the secret. As you know, visions are external magical foci that only a small minority of people possess. They use these visions to channel elemental power. In truth, every wielder of a vision is one who can attain godhood and ascend to Celestia. We call such people allogenes. Allogenes? Paimon's never heard of them before. <laughs> That's because this is a secret that only Archons are privy to. We don't need primitive tools like visions. Instead, each Archon has an internal magical focus that resonates directly with Celestia itself, known as a Gnosis. <laughs> It's just a glowing glass ball I carry around to avoid suspicion. So who was that nasty woman who sent Paimon flying and stole your Gnosis? Her name is Signora, number eight of the Harbingers. She and the rest of the Harbingers have been given godlike executive authority by the Tsaritsa of Snejnaya, and with it, strength surpassing that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa of Snejnaya? Isn't that... Indeed. She is one of the seven. The Tsaritsa who reigns from her winter palace, and the one person that the Fatui Harbingers all answer to. The seven don't always get along well, but still. I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? Five hundred years ago, I knew her well. But I can't say the same is true now. You see... A certain catastrophe happened 500 years ago, and after that, she cut off all ties with me. But we can save discussion of the Cryo Archon and the Fatui for another day. If you seek the rest of the Seven, many difficulties lie ahead of you still. You should head for Mondstadt's neighboring nation of Lilith. The Geo Archon who reigns there, unlike me, administrates his entire region personally. He only descends once every year to give his divine predictions, which set the direction for Lilith for the rest of that year. Even so, it sounds like he works much harder than a certain someone, hmm? <laughs> In any case, this year's rite of dissension is soon to begin. If you miss it, you'll just have to wait another year. What? Why didn't you tell us before? <sighs> well, then bye! We're going! One moment, Windborn Outlander. <laughs> Just
just use it gratefully. Or, better yet, treat me to a glass of dandelion wine. Traveler, as you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. The birds of Tavat, the songs in the cities, the Tsaritsa, her Fatui and the monsters, they are all part of your journey. The destination is not everything. So before you reach the end, keep your eyes open. Use the chance to take in the world around you. Great. So that's that for the Animal Archon's admonishments. Back to venti time. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Up till the end, Devalin remembered his duty as one of the Four Winds. As such, I don't intend to forcibly strip him of that duty and force my ideals of freedom onto him. I just hope that Devalin will be able to choose for himself and understand what freedom is. Before I became an Archon, I too was taught the meaning of freedom in this way by a friend. If you want to chat, now's the time. Uh, Kaya shared some new intelligence, you say? Oh, I see. So, the Abyss Order has a princess who orchestrated the plan to corrupt Devalin? They were probably trying to turn Devalin into a weapon of war for the Abyss. But that said, I have never heard of any such princess of the Abyss Order. I think so too. Apparently. But how does a prince come out of nowhere and take command over the entire Abyss Order? If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always. That Fatui lady didn't hang around, did she? She just grabbed your gnosis and left? She wanted to avoid any eyewitnesses from the Knights of Favonius. The slightest slip up here would have destroyed the Fatui's diplomatic relations with the Knights. So they're just gonna keep acting like Mondstadt's allies as if nothing happened? <sighs> if only the Seven Nations had banded together against the Abyss Order in the first place. The Fatui possess the strongest military among the Seven Nations, yet they've used it to steal the Holy Liar, covet the power of gods, and use Devalin as a bargaining chip against the Knights. Speaking of the Liar, didn't Diluc say something like this before? He said that the Fatui could only run amok across the Seven Nations and threaten the Knights because of the Harbingers. Yes. As I said earlier, the Cryo Archon has given them authority and strength beyond that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa... Oh, I haven't seen her in 500 years. What is she thinking? What's her plan? Oh, whatever the answer is, I have a feeling it's only going to make your search for the Seven all the more difficult. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not... As I said before, Vision wielders are known as Allogenes and may ascend to Celestia. A Gnosis is a higher order nexus of elemental manipulation and is emblematic of an Archon's status as one of the Seven. But as for which of the Seven took your sister, I'm sorry, I don't know. Wait, as one of the Seven, I'm not clear of suspicion yet either, am I? Hang on a hot second! Tone Death Bard is just one of Barbados' many incarnations. Who's to say that? <laughs> We're a great team indeed. Say, once you find your sister, how would you like to become one of the new Four Winds? Hmm, you don't seem too into it. Hey, Tone Death Bard! If being one of the Four Winds means free food, you can consider Paimon! <laughs> If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Well then, best be off to Lele. If the dissension ritual you failed to tally, then another year you must dally.